You may cross-examine. Do you know whose property you damaged? Pardon? Do you know whose property it was? Well, uh, first of all, we didn't consider those things property. We considered them, as I've tried to explain here at some length, as anti-proper, anti-human. But I guess I've said all but that. But it's being referred to as property. Uh, Do you know whose they were? Uh, well, we knew that those nuclear weapons are our responsibility, and we tried to do something about them. You didn't know whose they were? They shouldn't be anyone's. They shouldn't exist. But knowing they do exist, whose weapons are they? Good God, I don't know. No one at General Electric would claim them. You say that you're not violent. Right? By not violent, you mean you don't hit people? Well, that's a pretty depressing thought. Don't you think using a hammer on an object is violent? Well, um, not if the object, as you call it, is a nuclear weapon. Now, if these things had been filled with ping pong balls or buttermilk, I'd have left them alone. You say some laws you respect and some laws you don't. I think your testimony was that you respect and obey some laws, and some laws you don't. Well, Mr. Eckel, I think you put things rather badly. What I really said was that if the human law contravenes the law of God, I will break the human law to keep the divine law. All right, if you finish with your cross-examination, we'll, uh, we'll have a, a lunch recess until 2 o'clock. I want to speak the truth about the Mark 12a. Your assertions aren't necessarily based on fact. He's trying to describe a weapon that can be found in any GE handbook. Well, what's objected to? Your Honor, they are not on trial for opposing nuclear weapons. We are, in fact, on trial for opposing nuclear weapons. The only reason we are in this courtroom today is that we have carried out an action that is intended to call attention to the perils of the arms. Your Honor, I object once again. Objection sustained. Elmer, use your own judgment. Continuing under this harassment or stopping. Sure, whatever you want. Well, when you look at these instruments here, these Mark 12As, what would be the actual power of one of them? This is instrument. Your, uh, objection, Your Honor. The Nuremberg Principles, no, which have influenced me. Wait a minute, wait a minute, please. But I sustained an objection, Mr. Moss. The Nuremberg Principles are not relevant. They are precisely relevant. From the point of view that we are all, it is incumbent upon every citizen. Don't give me a speech. I said it wasn't relevant. OK. Let me spell out exactly what has influenced me. I have been influenced by the book Counterforce Syndrome, by Robert Aldrich, Objection, Your Honor. Uh, by the book Nuclear Madness, by Helen Caldicott. I have been influenced by books on international law, by Richard Falk. I have been influenced by the Pentagon Papers, by Daniel Ellsberg. I have been influenced by the writings of George Wald and by the writings of Robert J. Lipton, all of whom have been called here to testify. And it is a testament to the suppression of truth in this courtroom that these witnesses were not allowed to testify and that you were not allowed to hear what they had to say. I think I allowed with some degree of liberality, first of all, some criticism directed at the court from the witness stand, which was, in my opinion, contemptuous. No, Your Honor, I think it goes to his understanding. No, no, you were trying to get in the back door, that which you cannot get in the front. No, no, Your Honor. We are trying to get in the front door what belongs properly in the front door. That is an aid to this man's understanding. You made your point, denied. That's it. As an officer of this court, Your Honor, I'm trying to bring clarity to the witness's statements. I think that Elmer Moss needs a little help in making the point he's trying to make. Yes, he has needed a little assistance all throughout this trial in getting to his point. <laughs> oh. Your Honor, I believe that that is undignified and should be stricken from the record. Undignified? It's completely prejudicial. No, no it isn't. Your Honor, the law in the Commonwealth is clear. And it is that a defendant has the right to testify broadly. He certainly does. Oh, good. Then he can explain the Mark 12 A's. No, he cannot explain the Mark 12 A's. He can explain his justification and his personal conscience as he saw it. Oh, a justification and conscience. Then what would one of these, let's say, dropped on New York City or maybe Philadelphia? That is pertinent, I'm sure. Just one of them. No, no. He is on trial for the charges which I indicated at the beginning of this trial. 
Your Honor, I think he should be permitted to testify as to his understanding of Dr. Falk's writing. If he can't do that, then he is not being allowed to testify. Your argument is noted. Denied. Does Mr. Moss want to continue or not? Please return to the witness stand. Mr. Moss, do you want to continue? Would you please return to the stand? I do not plan to return to that stand until there is an opportunity for a full hearing of the issues in this case based upon the kind of defense that is legitimate and available to us under the laws of this state and this country. All right, that is your choice. You may think about it for a few minutes.